Woe to the false prophets. Who the most high makes no mistakes. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy, and say, Thou unto them that prophesy out their own hearts. Hear, hear the word of the Lord, thus said the Lord God. Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the desert. Ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. They have seen vanity and lying divination, saying the Lord said, and the Lord had not sent them. They do that all the time. <laughs> And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. Have ye not seen a vain vision? Have, and have ye not spoken a line to the nation? Whereas ye say the Lord set it. Obey, I have not spoken. You know how they be coming on. And the Lord said, and the Lord said this. Hey, sister, hey, come here. You know, the Lord told me today, oh, you're going to get that house. You're going to get that job. Come on, that's the spirit of divination. And they look forward to feeding off your emotions. Oh, yes, oh, yes, that's what I want. Oh, yes, preach. That is a false prophet. Okay? That is speaking vanity, lies. It is not of God. Where is that matching up with an actual revelation that is higher than vanity, which where you can express a testimony in your life aligning with scripture and having proof? That's prophecy. That's revelation. Or a dream that is not out of vanity. Again, these things are higher than us. And my hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and that divine lies. And they shall not be in the assembly of my people. Neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel. Neither shall they say, neither shall they enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord God. Because even because they have seduced my people saying peace. And there was no peace. And one built up a wall, and lo, others daubed it with untempered mortar. Say unto them, which daub it with untempered mortar, that it shall fall. There shall be an overflowing shower, and ye, O great hailstones, shall fall. And a stormy wind shall rend it. Lo, when the wall is fallen, shall it not be said unto you, Where is the daubing where with ye have daubed it? Therefore, thus said the Lord God, I will even rend it with a stormy wind in my fury. And there shall be an overflowing shower in my anger and great hailstones in my fury to consume it. So will I break down the wall and bring it down to the ground so that the foundation thereof shall be discovered and it shall fall 
and ye shall be consumed in the midst thereof, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Thus will I accomplish my wrath upon the wall and upon them. The wall is no more, neither they have they that doubt it. To wit, the prophets of Israel which prophesy concerning Jerusalem and which see visions of peace for her. And there is no peace, said the Lord God. Right. Um, you know, in my years through my awakening, out of all the prophetic dreams, visions, revelations, experiences, I was never learned, I was never led to that. Now, my bad. Um, Okay, there we go. I'm at 17. Ezekiel 13, 17. Sorry. Likewise, thou son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart, and prophesy thou against them, and say, Thus said the Lord, Woe unto the women that sow pillows to all armholes, and make kerchiefs upon the head of every stature to hunt souls. Will ye hunt the souls of my people, and will ye save the souls alive that cometh unto you? And will ye pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley, for pieces of bread, to slay souls that should die, and to save souls alive that should not live? By your lying to my people that hear your lies. Wherefore thus said the Lord God, Behold, I am against your pillows, where ye there hunt the souls to make them fly, and I will tear them from your arms and will let the souls go. Even the souls that ye hunt to make them fly. Your kerchiefs also I will tear and deliver my people out of your hand, and they shall be no more in your hand to be hunted. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. It continues to say, the word is as specific. Because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and strengthen the hands of the wicked, that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. Therefore ye shall see no more vanity, nor divine divinations, for I will deliver my people out of your hand, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So, these false prophets appearing all over the place, you know, they are so firm in who his people are. Um, where they come from, what color they are, you know. Just because it sounds good doesn't mean it's true. They play with your emotions like strings on a puppet. And a lot of people fall for it. And it causes division. And so with false prophets, you could be condemning the true chosen ones and uplifting the wicked ones because of your own heart, your own desires, your own divination, 
your own vanity. Which is not true. So beware of these false prophets popping up everywhere. All they can do is use these scriptures towards their own likeness. But I have yet to see actual prophesying, actual revelations intertwined with scripture and a person's personal experience with proof, a full on testimony with prophecy, with scripture. So if you have not been revealed on that level and you're just fixing up scriptures, throwing them around, dividing, conquering, puppeting, pulling strings for your own desires and what you wish it could be like, you are a false prophet. And you are leading people astray and you are causing a division. So you need to humble yourself. <laughs>